I get to spend my days really however I want. And I get to spend a lot of time coaching people. But other than that, I'm only working in my zone of genius. And then I get to be a mom, which is what I really want to do right now. So it's worth it for me to invest in all of these people to come alongside me, help me grow. Hello, hello. I'm excited you're here with me today. Yesterday on Instagram, I posted about my recurring income that comes in like on a daily basis. And I just took a screenshot of just the Stripe payments that come through. So if you're not aware of what Stripe is, it's just a payment processing. We use Stripe, we use PayPal, and then we also use MyAbundant, which you've heard Chase Craft be on the podcast before. That's his company that does payment processing. And then we also do just wires, direct wires to the bank that are my private clients. So we have a lot of different ways that we take in payments. And I just showed a screenshot of Stripe for the day. And it happened to be around $20,000. And that is a normal day at Mommy Millionaire. And it makes me excited to say that because I remember for the days, like the days that I dreamt about having recurring income like that. And I remember it being so hard thinking, oh my gosh, is that ever going to happen to me? People make it look easy. And I posted not to show you guys how much I make. I wanted to see, do you guys actually want to see how much money it takes to make money? Because that's what I think a lot of coaches and entrepreneurs they talk about all the glory. They show the big shiny, you know, objects, their fancy cars, their big houses, but they don't tell you everything that they do in order to make that lifestyle a reality. So I wanted to break it down for you. What our expenses are at Mommy Millionaire on a monthly basis, because I think a lot of you guys are going to go, whoa, <laughs> okay, she spends a lot, but Again, it's the reality of like, as you scale to an eight figure business, it's all about team. So it's all about investing in the right people to come alongside you. I think to make seven figures a year, you, you don't need a large team. It could be you and an assistant, honestly. Okay. But to get past that seven figure mark, it's all about who's coming alongside me. I don't know anybody who owns an eight figure business that doesn't have a large team. Okay. And I think I'm still lean. We're, we're building and we're growing rapidly, but I want to break it down for you. So one expense that we have is employee salaries and drum roll, please. Employee salaries are at 16,000 a month. Okay. Even as I say that, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Okay. 16,000. I remember when that's what Like when my coaching business first started making, you know, 15,000 a month, I was like on cloud nine. Again, if you're at that level of income where you're making 15,000 a month, that's amazing. That's amazing. You shouldn't really need a lot of overhead at that point, right? Because this is what people don't talk about. It is the overhead and this can cause a lot of stress. I've had to grow so much as a leader, as a founder in this, okay? Because having employees, is not for the faint of heart. You have to be willing to have hard conversations all the time. And I know I've talked in the past about, I don't want to label things hard because then it's like, oh, I don't look forward to that. But they're difficult conversations. They're not the fun conversations I like to have, but it's about talking about people's performances. And you know, when somebody's made a mistake and you got to talk about it, it's, it's uncomfortable for me because at the end of the day, I'm still a human and I want people to like me. And I have to reparent myself and nurture myself through like, it's okay to not have everybody be in love with you and your employees aren't always going to like you, you know, but I think we have a really good group at mommy millionaire where people take constructive feedback. I have to take, be willing to take constructive feedback as well as the leader. So yeah, salaries are at 16,000. Then I jumped down to one of our next biggest expenses, which is just the contractors that we have in place. So we have social media help. We have podcast management. We have a developer that isn't on staff. 
that I pay to like do development stuff on the website. (laughs) They're like coders and stuff like that. And I just don't have enough work for them to work full time for us. So that's, we contracted out. And that's also including everybody who makes commissions on the sales team. So that's included in that amount. Okay. So 8,500 bucks. We're up to, what is that? 24,000 at this point. Now let's go down to the next big one, which is we pay $5,000 a month to our ads agency. And if you're looking for a great ads team, you just DM me the word ads and I'll hook you up with our guys. So we pay them $5,000 a month just to run our ads, just to manage our ads based on a Facebook. So they, they only do Facebook ads for us. My ad spend is 15000 currently. We have been upwards of, you know, $30,000 a month. But right now we're at 15000 It's bringing in about 200 leads a day, which is really good. We're getting really good pricing on our leads. Makes me happy with it's worth paying my ads people $5,000 because they're geniuses. We talk to them on a regular basis because they're constantly looking at getting us better cost. And I'll say this about ads. I don't think it's for everybody. I really don't. I think it's for you if you're ready to scale and you also have the cash flow where you can afford to do paid advertising because it can be pretty pricey. And the way that I go off of our budget is now really taking, you know, like 10% at least, and investing it back into ad spend. Sometimes a little more than that, but right now that's what we're looking at, 10% or less, because we can. We're getting leads for for very inexpensive. Now, ads is something where they take a while to optimize. So you can't just like say, okay, I have a program launching next week. I want to run ads today. Because it takes at least like five days for your ads to optimize, really two weeks for them to really optimize. And you've got to have time to be spending hundreds of dollars a day and not seeing any return on that. So in the beginning, if I was a new coach, what I might do is go, okay, after I have a recurring income of around like 50 grand a month of private clients, when we have our private clients, there's really no overhead, which is the greatest thing about that business. I would start to take, you know, 10% of that and put that into a marketing budget for when I'm ready to do ad spend and just have that tucked away. So that's kind of like my recommendation. Another expense we have is our emails. We have a very large email list. And so our email provider is about $1,000 a month to host and to send out emails. And that's just emails. That's not text. Woo, a thousand bucks. Okay. Then miscellaneous software, we use Twilio for our texting. And we used to use community and that just got a little bit too pricey. So we don't use that anymore. We also use Alloware, which is a program that we use to call people. So people don't have to use their own personal cell phones and we can call directly from a computer. We also have Zoom inside of there. We don't pay for the webinar account. So it's pretty low fees. Slack, which is where I host my mastermind community. We also have uh, Marco Polo in there. I pay that on a yearly basis. It's pretty low. And we also have Asana, which is a project management software that my team uses to manage their tasks and to communicate with each other throughout the day on how they're doing. Woo. Okay. I'm out of breath. So that's, that's the expenses. And when I talk to other business owners that make a lot more than me, they're like, that's nothing. (laughs) That's nothing. Okay. And I'm like, oh, that makes me feel better. But I am always assessing expenses because I don't have a CFO on staff. I do have a bookkeeper, but, you know, I'm the one that's really still looking over the finances and saying, okay, is this worth it? You know, like I have to make sure that every single one of my employees is bringing money into the business, that their job is helping the business create revenue. Because if it's not, then there's not a need for them. And they're also not going to feel needed and they're not going to be happy and fulfilled in their job. So we're always looking at that and making sure that, you know, our employees are hitting their key performance indicators. I teach a lot about that when I work with my private clients because none of us went to business school. Maybe some of us did, but I didn't. I had to go to the school of hard knocks 
to learn how everything worked. And so I want to teach it to those of you that are listening in right now that want to be an effective CEO. You want to be an effective founder of your company. Always be assessing expenses. I'm always looking to cut things. Like I'm like, if we don't need that little software that we're spending $50 a month on, buy. Like if we only use it once or twice a month, buy. I'm not, I'm not going to pay for it. We'll find a better way to do it for free. <laughs> and it might sound like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. But we always want to be looking at how do we get better at our bottom line. And that's, I think, what takes you from just being a worker in your business to actually being a profitable business owner is learning to work with the numbers, make the numbers make sense for you and your business. Because one thing I want in my business, right, is I don't want to be an employee in my own business. I want to have freedom. The reason why I have an entire team around me is so I can have more freedom to live in my zone of genius. And right now, I love coaching, teaching people about how to create success in their life via social media. But the other thing I'm loving is real estate and investing in it, growing my fund, like very much want to be spending a lot of time doing that. And, you know, I got to have a big team around me to help me do all of these things. Whew. So I didn't even get into lifestyle expenses. That's just our business expenses. And it's worth it because, you know, and you could even look at that and say, okay, let's round that up to about 50,000 bucks a month, right? In expenses. Let's uh, look at that and go, okay, even if the business was only making $100,000 a month. Okay. Let's just say that was the case. $100,000 a month. Okay. Well, what happens there? is what is the margin you're making? You have a 50% margin. So that means that's really good. That's really good. You know, like in e-commerce businesses, you're lucky if you get a 30% margin in your business. You're still profiting wildly. And I have a lot of freedom. So I'm willing to pay for the team to be around me because I get to spend my days really however I want. And I get to spend a lot of time coaching people But other than that, I'm only working in my zone of genius. And then I get to be a mom, which is what I really want to do right now. So it's worth it for me to invest in all of these people to come alongside me and to help me grow. So obviously, I want to know your questions around, you know, hiring, investing in people to come on your team and, you know, what it takes to really, truly be an effective CEO. And I'll make sure to answer those on the podcast. But The biggest thing you need to understand here too, before I wrap this up, is have a bookkeeper. So constantly somebody that's coming in alongside you and helping you organize where all the money is going in your business, giving you, so you can have that bird's eye view on a regular basis where you're like, okay, here's where the money is. Is this working? Like, is this helping us grow? And one thing like I found last year is we were paying for like that Zoom webinar stuff. And I was like, I don't even host webinars. That's not a part of my business plan. So why am I continuing to pay 500 bucks? It was like 500 bucks a month, you know, for this thing. And I was like, whoa, thank God my bookkeeper like came in and like categorized that. And I realized it like, we don't need that. So it helps you start to question things and realize like, do I really need this? Every person that's a part of the team needs to have a performance indicator attached to them because If they're not hitting their indicator, it means they're not helping add revenue to the business. And that means that their role and position is no longer needed. And you need to constantly be watching that because that's going to help everybody continue to grow. I don't even like to call my people employees because they care so much about our business. I like to call them entrepreneurs, you know, but it it helps them like, so I'm not going to, I can't stay comfortable. I got to continue to grow. You know, I got to continue to stretch myself because Once you're comfortable, you're dying. And I don't want anybody a part of my team dying. I want everybody growing. I want everybody challenging and stretching themselves. And that's a part of the culture. So people have to have a performance indicator that stretches them month after month after month. Okay. So I hope this podcast helped you shed some light on really how much money it takes to make money and scale your business. I love you all. Thanks for listening in.